That was terrific. Uh, I think the way that you all, the places that you took us, I think, because um, again, when you hear extracurricular, it just seems like, oh, that's just fun, a way for kids mm -hmm. to you know, burn off some energy. But obviously, this has real impacts, not just now, but tomorrow and moving forward. So I really do appreciate all of your time. I, and I hope you had a chance to uh, say what you wanted to say. And Michelle, I'm sorry, because I had to pivot because I oh, knew the time was coming up. You know what, don't but, worry. Yeah. I'm not just, allowed to I use really the word pivot. Know <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Every time you say it, ding I on the head. I really <laughs> was interested in knowing those numbers because I, I, um, I, would, be, I would love to read that study um, because I he said, you said 65%. So I assume that 65%, I would love to know the breakdown of it. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, George has my email, and uh, as a, uh, Michelle, if you email me, I'll Zoom with you in a second and give you all that data. I'll just say quickly, Michelle, we studied kids all the way from five years of age to 20. And for females, the separation between males and females starts at around age six because of the gender bias in society, mm -hmm. present in sport, physical education, everywhere. That lack of confidence results in a lack of confidence at age nine. And then by age 13, the average Canadian female associates unhappiness with movement as opposed to happiness. That is a tragedy. That is a that is gender sad. mistreatment and very sad. So I just mentioned that to you, but if, uh, you know, feel free to uh, email me and I'll share, share those papers. And, and I had, yeah, a, I had a question to ask you because yeah, go, go, go. Uh, I had a question to ask you too um, because I read somewhere that for girls, if they're not in a team sport, um, then when they get older, other things become their identity. But if they're in, in sports, that becomes their identity. Yeah, the identity crisis is a major one in the sense that we want a robust identity in children that's not hinging on one sport alone, but your identity is based on many capacities. We've seen very big tragedies when people over-specialize in sport and then their identity is on one pinhead and then they lose that sport and then they go into an identity crisis. So creating education creates a robust identity by having you be able to participate in many things, including team sport, which then gives you a buffer from when certain things go wrong and awry and bumps happen in your life. So you don't go into the identity crisis spiral. So I think- Which um, is similar to what Simone Biles had probably went through, which now as you're talking absolutely. about it, I'm seeing that. 65, I mean, I work with Olympic athletes a lot and it is scary. Uh, about 90% of them or more experience a two to three year period after their last quadrennial in the Olympics where they don't know who they are. They go, who am I for two or three years? If you magnify that, you know, 70% of people drop out of sport in, in teenage years. And um, if you think if their identity was pigeonholed to one thing, imagine the identity crises that are happening. And this is rampant. Um, so education is a critical component to making movement experience diverse mm. kids can choose and move around from activities throughout life not just one thing but they have one and a few others in their pocket and it is a tragedy for females worldwide there's no country that's fixed the female problem even when they made in sweden the law mm -hmm. they have made the convention of the rights law in january 1st 2020 so if you violate the law and don't provide the same opportunities for females there's a legal repercussion and i think there should be um uh it's shameful uh, in a way well i you know i think you've just planted the seeds for another discussion that we will have on this show um thank you all so much the agenda with steve pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you thank you for supporting tvo's journalism